despite their mutual animosity communism and capitalism have one thing in common, if an entrepreneur has nothing but ambition, the business idea will not likely produce a startup. Using conventional methods startups require access to a lot of capital. This capital is acquired either from the state or from private sources. Both routes create liabilities and leave the entrepreneur obligated to those who assisted the startup. An entrepreneur who wishes to sell eggs must buy chicks, feed and a lot of equipment as well as the facilities in which the production will occur. There are papers to sign and taxes to pay along with other upfront legal and startup costs. These expenses increase risk for investors because the costs may not be recouped. The less likely the expense can be liquidated, the higher the interest levied on the incurred debt. The interest charged and the debt repayment schedule increases the risk of business failure. Entrepreneurs may miscalculate the cost of setting up production. Nothing dooms a business quicker than being underfunded. The legal obligations imposed on egg producers may not have been understood or he or she may have miscalculated potential profits and not be able to replace worn-out equipment. There are many different ways a conventional business can fail. A community has a vested interest in ensuring a business succeeds but conventional thinking has not been able to remove or lower individual risk without also lowering the motivation to start a business. The hatchery or egg production facility, banker or any component in the production stream ought not to be assuming the risk of starting a business, but neither ought the state or any public agency be held liable if a business fails. But how does the state assume the risk without also capturing all of the benefits? Why ought individuals assume all the risk without also being able to reap all of the rewards? These are questions the conventional economic systems of left and right cannot answer. Buyer and seller seem to be part of the same community. If a business does not do well, the buyer and seller are both harmed. The entrepreneur is harmed when a business fails but the community is harmed more. Yet, this superficial analysis does not do justice to the truth. In the free enterprise system large risk requires or justifies a large return. It is the business owner who addresses the issue of risk and determines whether the risk is warranted. The individual bears the personal, financial and emotional costs. Under the capitalist system chickens are assets of private companies. Legal ownership is transferred from one commercial entity to another as a private sale. But the impacts of success and failure do not start or end at the property line of a commercial establishment. This does not make assets the property of the state or some nebulous public body. We are wrong in thinking private persons can own assets but just as wrong thinking the public has ownership of the natural world. These things belong to Eden, or to God or to the agency set up by God to represent his interests. Eden understands chickens are assets that it owns. Chickens and other assets are transferable from one sector and facility to another, but they remain the property of Eden. These transfers use the equity represented by the chickens as a form of currency. In Eden transfers take place without risk because the risk remains in Eden. Economic sectors, facilities and other elements are not under different authorities, they all represent Eden. Because risk is eliminated within the Eden framework, chickens and all other assets can be transferred from one sector to any other without exposing human beings to risk. In Eden it is not important if the chickens are under the care of Sam or Sally. In Eden persons are stewards. Ownership remains with Eden. We are the workers of Eden, not the owners. The transfer of the asset, chickens, from the breeder to the egg producing facility, increases the equity of Eden. Assets are always allocated in Eden, to where the most value will be generated for Eden. As assets of Eden the elements of an egg production facility, increase the equity of Eden. Transfers are made to where the equity is greatest. Transfers of assets occur when the equity of Eden will be increased by the transfer. Eggs have only limited value. 
putting the chickens to work laying eggs, increases the value of the eggs. This is true only when eggs are also eaten. If eggs are never eaten, producing them will not increase equity. When the eggs were transferred to the egg producer equity increases because of the use to which the chickens were put. However, assets have inherent value. The farmer is paid for the work he does as he raises chickens. But the chickens represent dominion or our obligation to God. They have value and so transfers of chickens or other assets must be paid for by a credit to the seller's accounts. In this case the seller is the chicken producing facility. Equity represents value to the community, but the community is not people but specializations. Communities are diverse, but in types not in content. That is an economy is made up of diverse communities that are diverse in terms of the way value is created for Eden. Diversity only makes sense in terms of the way value is added to Eden. All other diversity is irrelevant or even counterproductive. A free market transaction may benefit Sam and harm Sally. This often results in the economy experiencing a social cost. In free enterprise, the net benefit of an exchange could be negative. Sally could buy 1,000 chickens and they all died before adulthood. Private ownership makes Sam and Sally combatants. Individuals in the free market compete to gain an advantage over the other. In Eden citizens share a common interest in increasing the equity of Eden. 1,000 chickens might still die but it would not impact Sally. Chickens are assets belonging to Eden. The egg producer is an asset of Eden, not a standalone proprietorship or an agency of the state. This is why risk is eliminated. The individual is always paid for the value added to Eden. A family provides its members with what they need, because this benefits the family. Eden provides its citizens with what they need for the same reason. When each member of the family does what he or she does best, the family is benefited. Family members provide family members what they need, because the family is benefited as each member is benefited. It is a dysfunctional family that prevents members from helping each other, or which imposes unrealizable demands on each other. In a biological family there is some from each according to his or her abilities to each according to his or her needs, but we need a more formal way to exchange goods and services when strangers are involved. A business that transfers a desk from one department to another increases efficiency without increasing risk. The desk is transferred to make the business as a whole more efficient. This does not increase costs to the business nor to any of its departments. The transfer is just a reordering of assets to make the value of the business higher. There is no danger that the receiving department will default on a desk payment and the seller go bankrupt as a result of the default. The two departments are part of the same economic entity and the equity of one is part of the equity of all. The department that gives up the desk sees or ought to see a benefit in giving up what is underused. Another department is made more effective by the transfer. The objective of both departments is to make the business as a whole more profitable. Builders, equipment makers, chick hatcheries etc. are assets. They belong to God but are also assets representing the dominion of man over the things of the earth. Assets can be transferred to the sector that has the greater need. When more chicks are needed by the egg producers, the hatchery supply more chicks. The buyer of chicks is not an individual but an economic sector. The cost of the chicks is a transfer of equity from the account of one sector to the other. The hatchery is not at risk of default by the buyer because the buyer and seller are economic sectors, not individuals or governments. It is Eden that credits the seller's account by deducting the buyer's account. The buyer is not in debt to the hatchery or to a bank. The buyer is simply an account in Eden. There is no concern about the buyer's creditworthiness because the buyer and seller are sectors in Eden, not independent entities. Customers are the workers of Eden who have accounts with Eden. 
those who need eggs are able to purchase eggs as a debit to their account. A debit balance is covered by Eden's assets. The debit column is decreased when goods and services are obtained, cash decreases, only in one sector of the economy. Debits reduce a citizen's or sector's credit account, but Eden has no account, and its debits and credits always cancel out. A debit account represents buyer equity, and a credit account is seller's equity. When a buyer purchases goods and services his equity account or cash account is reduced. Consumption reduces credits. Sales reduce debits. The accounts of Eden tend towards zero. The higher the debit account of a citizen the more Eden works to increase credits. The higher the credit account the greater the pressure to increase debits. If the eggs being produced are no longer required, assets from this area are transferred to other sectors. Assets move from one account to another result in the credit column being increased in the seller's account. Accounts that receive assets are debited. The unit of account used is based on preferred shares issued by Eden. Producers provide eggs to those who need them because this creates more value for Eden than is created by not selling eggs. No one is concerned about the credit worthiness of Eden's citizens. The family never worries about the credit worthiness of a family member. Transfers of assets is just a transfer within the Eden economy. Transfers do not impact the overall financial health of Eden as credits and debits are always in balance. In a closed economy such as Eden, costs cannot be externalized. Eden is not benefited if one or two individuals shift costs onto the rest of the group. If 70% of the population work and 10% benefit while 20% are destitute, Eden is not helped. Eden requires those who work earn and eat, and those who will not work do not benefit from the labor of those who do work. If the accounting department of a large corporation decides to separate the tracking of income from the recording of expenses, the income tracking office does not have to purchase what it needs from the accounting department. The assets are transferred from one part of the business to the new department. The costs may accrue to the new department and the assets transferred may be recorded as a credit to the department supplying the assets, but these are simply numbers in accounting. Paper costs do not create risk or real costs for the business as a whole or any of its departments. The business is not going to push its accounts receivables into bankruptcy because it missed a payment. The costs of setting up a new department is not a liability to the organization. Setup costs do not pose a risk to a new department. New businesses are set up in Eden in the way conventional businesses set up a new department. The costs are all in-house. When a child wishes to put on a play and needs props and costumes, she takes clothes and other articles freely from family members, her need is sufficient to justify her use. If additional materials are required, the family purchases them. The child does not incur a debt, at least not in the formal sense. A sibling pressed into service may believe he or she is owed a favor in return. The child does not make a profit and the family does not suffer a loss. There is no risk in the venture and thus no need for anyone to be compensated. Yet, a benefit is produced for all the members of the family. Even being part of the audience is part of the value added to the family. All of this takes place without the profit motive or the regulatory interference of the state. To put a monetary on the service and demand compensation from the family is to destroy the very value that would otherwise have been created for the family. In the same way one member of a family may hand down clothes to a younger sister, Eden may give credits to citizens to improve the economy. There is no risk in paying equity forward as the benefit always remains with Eden.